how do you keep photograph in the same place? One year of these pictures is one thing, but you'd start laying year on top of year. It's kind of like looking at, at the strata of, of soil or something. And you begin to see things that you could never see with the individual image. Part of what makes the work so valuable is that it's a, it's an outsider in his own world. Um, he has more affinity and I think actually empathy for other outsiders that aren't getting a quite a fair shake. And so the issues of race and class and privilege and he knew that just intuitively. And I think that you feel that, you feel it in the Horace Battles and the story he tells. It's where he stops to photograph somebody and they they are not sure what he's up to and he's trying to make a valentine to them and to the place. And, and it's that sort of sense of um, impossibility that you can't penetrate, you know, the, the, the social order no matter how much you try. When he would go to uh, Willis Park, you know, for gatherings, and you see this Confederate monument go from this lone monument to being the, the backdrop for uh, integrated prom of a public high school, and he knows what all of that means. That's what energized it. They're emblematic of the fundamental paradox of the human condition. And if there's no paradox, he's not interested. things that are totally, I find, totally counterintuitive to a photographer. I mean, how many photographers can we say, can we name, that have gone to the grocery store to take pictures? Where there's fluorescent lights, where the light is horrible, and it sounds like the last refuge of the photographer. You know, everything else would have to be gone. So he goes there for content, goes there for social reasons, whatever, and yet finds a way to make some pretty beautiful imagery Yeah, Paul grew up Jewish and was culturally very, very Jewish, but he, he was very drawn to spirituality. He was often drawn to the communities within Decatur County who he thought also existed a little bit on the periphery of power. And so he finds this these ministers very, very powerful, very artful, regardless of what he believed, whether he believed what they were saying or not, he was really drawn to it. I'm a little disappointed, more than a little disappointed, that he didn't get to see this book. Um, and on the other hand, I think a book like this has its own schedule. If we'd have rushed it, it wouldn't have been this book. So once he started putting work in the Duke, uh, in the Archive of Documentary Arts, he would make a certain number of prints a year and send them up here, methodically. So 50 prints might come from Decatur County to, to Duke, and if you do that year after year after year, pretty soon you got over 500 exhibition quality prints in an archive. It sounds so simple, but I can't, I can't think of another photographer that I know that, could, that works that way. That just says, I'm gonna finish this body of work. I don't know where it's going except to the archive. I don't know if anybody cares, I'm just gonna finish it. He's always wanted his work to have a utility beyond aesthetics. So as much as he wants it to hang in a gallery or be acquired by the Museum of Modern Art or be printed nicely, he doesn't want that to be the be-all and end-all. He wants people to be looking at him, writing about what's on the shelves of the store or whatever. So he didn't want to, uh, you know, keep his light under a bushel down down in Decatur County. 